Man, I'd like to thank the Lord for another blessed day. Another blessed day. We got the order out today. We're gonna do another review. Mm. Excuse me about that. We're gonna do another review on that projector. Yeah, it still works. Trust me, it takes a lot to break one of those projectors. Again, like I said, they're cheap projectors, but man, they're cheap projectors. So anyway, we're gonna do. I gotta do another review for the site. That's basically about it. I should do that for throwing the projector around. But again, that thing was it's crap, man. That is the worst. I've had some knockoff projectors in here before, but that literally has to be the worst knockoff projector I have a projector ever had. That has to be the worst. I mean, I've had some pretty bad ones in here for testing, but that literally was the worst projector I've ever tested. Man. And I had one that was a little bit, a little bit slightly worse than that, but well, not by much, but that thing was the worst. I mean, that thing couldn't pick up for Jack. Even for a knockoff, it wasn't picking up really anything. And then on the gray screen, it was horrible the way it was coming up. Should have showed a little better than that. Man. They're gonna start making them cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. I feel sorry for people who spend those $3,100 for a projector and then find out that thing is crap all right so this is what we're doing today I had to go downstairs and get the stand because I forgot we didn't have the stand downstairs upstairs so I had to grab it my stand let me put you guys someplace right now so that's what we're working on right now so I had to build the stage literally I had enough wood to finish off most of it, which is good. Which was the hard part was just getting the top part done. Doing this without a leveler. Like I said, if you do this enough times, you build enough screens, the chances of using a leveler, especially if you've done it too many times, you don't need to use them because you automatically know it. That's like a person who's, uh, who's uh, cooking, knows how to measure by hand because they know the feel and the weight of the spices, they automatically know. Instinct. That's what it comes down to. Instinct. Let me put this in real quick because I gotta move my uh, my stand around. I gotta put you guys here for the time being so I can get this thing adjusted in. stages and their home theater setup. They had actual stages. So this is what we had to do. Can't see most of it because it's painted now. I'm darkening the screen up. Um, this right here, so you can see what's left because that side you're not going to be able to see because it's painted, it's painted nearly uh, with the, uh, yeah I painted it with the screen paint. I love this stuff. I paint on everything. But anyway, as I told you before, I wanted to coat the entire room with this coating anyway. But anyway, as I told you before, this is the system I had to put in. So this is actually bolted to the wall, actually screwed into the wall, that's screwed into the wall over there. And this is the actual stage. Now this is just for the time being to hold it up while we get everything set up. I got these L brackets coming in for the back area and back there and back there. So that way when we take the screen and we push it in, it has a point where it can't go all the way to the back, which we don't want it to. We want to have a certain stopping point. So we're going to put heavy duty L brackets here and at the bottom, hit this up and connect this to that. And then put an extended lip out on top of that so it stands out a little bit so it looks like it's actually sitting physically on a stage. This is not the actual screen, this is the actual stage part. So the screen, we're gonna build and then slide that into the actual uh, frame itself. So that's how all this is gonna be designed. Pretty easy to do. Like I said, very easy to do. Guy gave me some blueprints today and then my Lord gave me more blueprints and man, I'm telling you, we're gonna, this thing is gonna be pretty cool when we put it together because I don't want something where it's gonna be hanging off the wall. We don't want that. We want an actual stage that the screen is going to sit inside of. I'm gonna do a dedicated theater room. I'm doing me a dedicated theater room. I'm actually building me an actual physical stage for the screen to fit inside of. That's what I want. So that's what we're putting together. We already put it together already. Well, I put it together this morning. And then uh, I'm just painting it down, getting it ready. 
And then after that, I'm gonna start measuring my, actually measure the screen size already, we're good on that. And just fit that right here like, when we're done. So today we're going to be out in the backyard, but we're going to be doing a different form of projecting. I actually got a few things I have to test out in the backyard, so we won't be on the 250 today. But I will be uh, working on something else besides the 250. Actually, a few of y'all need to get a life at the end of the day. Is it, is it that bad for you? Literally, I'm up in the morning building dedicated theater rooms, developing new screen paints, contract negotiations, processing orders. And for some reason, I don't know where in the world you get this adolescent kind of attitude where you feel that if you message me with something really nasty, I'm going to cry in my hands. Are you kidding me? I'm an adult. That's something kids do. That's like if a kid comes up to me and calls me a doo-doo face, you think I'm gonna argue with him? No, I'm gonna look at him and go, hmm, that's a child, move on. That's it, that's the end of it. Because I'm an adult at the end of the day. But when you send insults like that, you know how I see you? It doesn't make me cry or anything. I look at you like, wow, what a child. That's how I see you as a child. You're an adolescent. So we just post your stuff. We got a special place, I'm not telling you, I'm not going to show y'all, but there's a special place where we post them at, where people can see how they act up and carry on, and which is interesting because other people have companies too, they get the same kind of nonsense too, they post theirs too, so we get a chance to read the, the idiots at the end of the day. It's an idiot bulletin, bulletin board, you guys actually, end up, people who do dumb stuff end up on it, let's say you guys, people end up on there, but really, where's the intelligent level? These are individuals that get in cars and drive to work and all of a sudden in the day, and that's where your intelligent level lays at the end of the day. So let me get this straight. You're a grown man calling or emailing another grown man who's working and conducting business. That doesn't make you look very intelligent at the end of the day. It makes you look like a little child. It does. That's how I perceive your emails. I look at them and I put you in junk mail. That's where you go. And I go about my business. It doesn't disrupt my day. It just shows me how much of a child you are. Uh, You at the end of the day, honestly, when you sit down and you really think about what you have done, you're not even a man at the end of the day, or you can call yourself a grown woman. You are a child. Look at your daughter, look at your son. They're more intelligent than you at the end of the day. It's sad, but it's true because you should know better because you are an adult. But like I said, that's why I don't argue with you. I don't argue with them when they call me up. I go, have a good day, hang the phone up, and I go about my business. I got work to do. I got time to be wasting. Oh my goodness, it's sad, but it's true. And I'm gonna get back to this I got things to do. We got a dedicated theater room, but I just wanna put that in there because I find it. It's funny that they really think that they're hurting my feelings. Oh, I sent them an email. It is disrupting and hurting his feelings. He must be crushed. Really, what are you, like 10? Go oh, up. Wow. Oh my goodness. He must be hurt. I, must, I destroyed him. One swift blow. Now, you gotta understand. You know, your, your comments really don't mean anything at the end of the day because, again, like I said, keep doing what we do. But still, we can keep saying the same thing and still 
We get no freaking, uh, what's the word for it? They can't back it up. Order the paint. If you got time to go out there and make memes and call my house up, send me emails, you got time to order the paint. And we know why you can't order it because you faked all your demonstrations. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows you faked all your demonstrations. So, yeah. Because you would have had the product by now. If you had already tested already, you beat our product, as you said you did, you, it'd be easy for you to reorder again. Just like it's easy for us to reorder again, but the only problem, we have to go through the problem of getting our money back in our account. That's what we go through. We got to really get the money back in the account, that's why. They don't even want to keep it. They don't even want to keep the money. We give them the money, but they don't want to keep it. I don't get that. Give you the money, and you don't want to keep it. I don't know. All right. Let's start. I put that out there again because, like I said, I got my customers and people I do business with. Like, did they place an order? I'm like, no, heck no, they haven't. We haven't seen anything yet from them. Uh, no. So uh, man. In paint. This thing had to be designed differently, man. It, it, the blueprints always change every time we put these things together. They always change. Let's get back to topic here. Let's get back to basics. But I just want to share that with you that you know you naysayers out there. Just want to let you know that you know you're not you're not disrupting anything. Nothing's going on. You're not disrupting anything at all. You're not causing any any damage. You're just making yourself sound like a child. Now, take some advice from Mr. Bird. I, I could be very easily going to a computer, post up nonsense, make up memes and all that stuff, and fake pages and all that stuff. I could do all that. But I don't have time because I work. Instead of doing reviews on Christmas lights or on LED lights, the product should have been ordered, it should have been at the department, and it should have been, the review should have been done again. But like I said, I could easily waste my time in going in and basically making memes and calling people up and all that nonsense, but I don't. Number one, I'm an adult. Number two, I'm a very busy man. I don't have the time. I had to be up at four o'clock in the morning to process orders, to make way, to make time to get this done. The reason why I had to do the projector review yesterday is because I had to do this early in the morning when I got up. So that's what my crazy schedule is. I don't have that kind of time to do that kind of stuff because I run a physical company where these individuals don't. They run a hobby at the end of the day. This is nothing but a hobby. They can't back up any of their products. Their products don't work well to begin with. We've had them down here for testing. They cancel orders left and right. They commit mail fraud on a whole nother level. And then when requested to buy the products directly from us, they are afraid. Because you've seen already, we're, we're, way past, we're way past a month already. And these are my, these are individuals that called the house, sent emails requesting this. But it's interesting when they request, send me an email, I don't waste around, you never have to say out of your mouth, hey, when are you gonna order? <laughs> no problem, we'll order. We dropped 1365 into his account. $1,365 into his account in orders. The other one got $700 in orders dropped into their account. Where did the money go to? Right back to my banking account, that's where it went to. <sighs> so, Yesterday, I'm on the gaming system, and then I see a box sitting out there thinking, oh, great goodness, this can't be the projector, because the projector was supposed to be here on the 11th. 
but I have to do the review that night so we can get that out of the way so I can be up to get the orders taken care of so that way I can get up and get this done because this whole entire setup is for not only for me, but it's also set up for the people that I go to form sites in who have dedicated theater rooms. It's kind of hard to pretty much talk about your product when you actually do not have a dedicated theater room and a room for people who have dedicated theater rooms. So I built one. And I'll tell you something, I'm glad I did. Not only for that, man, this was a freaking learning experience. I mean, you really can't talk about dedicated theater rooms until you actually physically build one. And I'm not talking about having something where you have, it changed my way I look at it because downstairs, even though we had the screen and we had nothing else in there but the screen, it's not dedicated. I mean, this would be dedicated. This is definitely dedicated. Yeah, definitely. Even when we had the 235 in there, this is definitely dedicated. Ooh, it would have been nice if I got a 235 in here, but I ain't got enough wall for it. I ain't enough wall for the 235. But yeah, you know? We're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. Don't kill yourself. But yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put one in. And you know exactly what you gotta go through. I put one of these babies in. It is not, it's not, uh, it's not that easy, I'll tell you that much. in the video to you, you listen. Now in my last video, one of the videos I was in, we had, uh, I was using a formula that had no odor to it, which is pretty cool, something we're testing out. And I was able to use it without a mask on. The other stuff we had to use with a mask on. And I sat there and said, as I was basically doing the demonstration, so this is the new formula we're working on, it's odorless, like it's no odor to it, it's pretty cool. Somebody came in that fast and said, Oh, I thought you were supposed to have so and so and so. My goodness, L just take the time before you go into your rants and just listen. Because there's always going to be somebody saying something. Just don't listen at all. Listen to the demonstration. I'm very clear on how I do things. So we're going to be very clear on how I do things. So we're going to paint the bottom. I'm going to paint the bottom part of this. And... Then we're gonna, we can't connect to the bottom because we need massive L brackets for it. But yeah, they don't listen. That's one point. I said a dozen times video demonstrations. We don't support knockoffs. I said that more times to count. We don't support them, we don't support them. But you said, no, I never said, never said I supported a knockoff.
Oh, man, happy to be up. Get this finished, get this done. I have no idea how this is going to work out at all, period. Sorry about the bottom of my socks, but I walk around in them all day and they get dirty. Back it up. Did I call? What did I call the theater room? If all you got to do is put in some chairs, it depends on how you build it. That's where it comes down to. A dedicated theater room comes down to how you put it together. I'm me in the back. I'm raising my chairs up. So I had to put in measurements to figure out how high the chairs had to be up. So the chairs in the front and the chairs in the high, high enough had to be high enough where they weren't going to hit the back of somebody's head, but also to be able to hit the screen at the same time when you be able to see it. All that had to be measured out in order how far the seats had to sit apart, all that, what kind of seats to get, to measure the length of each um, uh, 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 seating. It's a lot of work. And then on top of that, most people when they do their, their dedicated, they basically just throw the screen against the wall. I didn't want to throw the screen against the wall. I actually wanted to build an actual stage so the screen could fit inside of the stage with hanging curtains. So to make sure the curtains have more of a theater effect, up at the very top, there are two planks that go from this side to this side. They're a couple inches out from the physical stage itself, so they hang down. Because I want this thing to look like it's actually realistic as I possibly can get it. So inside, we're going to put in heavy L brackets so we slide the screen in, it only locks to a certain degree, it only goes so far in. That's all going to have a blackout material, so another light is pushing through on the other end. So there's three stages on how I'm putting this together. So doing it that way, because I've watched everybody else put theirs together, how they assembled it, and the people at the stages, that's what I wanted. I wanted an actual stage put up. Oh, man. The majority don't have curtains. I want curtains on mine. Definitely want curtains. So in order to get the stage, to fit right, it had to be drilled into the wall. So that way, like I said, these brackets right here, just for the time being, to make sure it stays secure. We'll put the heavy ones in the back here and here to have about that much on them. So when we slide the screen, in, it'll lock. It'll have a nice little lip that will stick out probably about that far. And then at the bottom part, we'll connect this and then we'll put a round base around here and a bottom area at the bottom for the stage. That's how we want to set it up. Oh, I cannot wait. So once this is done, then all I got to do now is I got to work on raising the back up a little bit. Eh, grouped. Raise the back up a little bit. And then um, put the seat sitting in, sorry, seating in there. Uh, we're going to use the same paint we use for the floor. So yeah, somebody, like I said, people will come in and make some weird comments, but I had somebody come like, oh, you use regular house paint for your floor? Then I just sit there and say floor paint. 
That's why I said some people don't know anything about painting at the end of the day. You definitely don't know anything about painting at the end of the day. You can't use the same paint for bathrooms. Same paint used downstairs, you can't use it for your bathroom, you can't use it for your kitchen. They got special paint for the bathroom and they got special paint for the kitchen. That's an area that's going to have a lot of moisture, a lot of hot and cold going on with it, a lot of steam going on with it. And you run the risk of basically collecting mold or anything else under the surface because the product you have in there is not mold and mildew resistance. So when you paint a bathroom, you have to use a certain kind of paint when you do it. Same thing like a floor. A floor has to have a certain kind of paint on it. Any other paint, you would scuff the daylights out of the floor. You'll damage it. Your stuff is permanent. So, trust me, I know what paints to use when I'm painting at the end of the day. You want to go cheap, you can go with that cheap paint. I've seen people buy that cheap paint, you know what's going to happen. Whatever color you have on the other side is going to bleed right through. You get cheap primer, it's going to do the same thing. I get a one coat applicator, everything inside, it's $60 a container. The paint that I used to paint this room in that all bright white was $80 a container, a gallon. Because it was a high fluorescent white, had all in one primer. That thing went over the black screen like it was nothing. So what you pay for is what you get. I did not like doing a job twice. But the floor paint, that was the best. I say that was the best floor paint I ever used in my life. And keep in mind, I had to get something, like I said, water-based because this is a big floor. I can come here and paint this whole entire floor and they got fumes coming off of it too? No, man, it was perfect. 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 I like my vampire curtains. Now I like these curtains because, as I said before, I want it dark in here, but like I said, these are going to have drapes anyway. These drapes we have on the floor, I ordered them for this one, and this one I want all my drapes to match in here with my uh, curtains for my, uh, for my movie theater screen. But these right here are not even those blackout curtains, they're basically just uh, tablecloths. Tablecloths folded over twice and that's all it is. Allows light to be able to push in, but it keeps the room dark at the same time. I ain't spent a lot of money. Eight bucks. That's it. I got a good deal. I got four of them for about 40 bucks. That's it. And on blackout curtains cost you like 30, 40 bucks. Maybe $60. That's why I told you when I'm building this thing, I'm building it affordable. So I can go back, write down everything that I did to put it all together, and then post it and say, look, this is how much it cost me to put this together. Because everybody who thinks of a dedicated theater room, the first thing they pop in their mind is, oh, this thing's gonna be crazy expensive. It doesn't have to be expensive at the end of the day. You don't have to spend all this money. We already went down and purchased our trim. This is the trim right here that I'm putting up here for, for decorating the whole entire thing. Yep. So I'm gonna drop in right now. Yeah, my curtains are pretty big. My curtains are big enough where I can actually my curtains are pretty wide, so my curtains, I'm going to cut those in half and, and sew them right here and here down the side and have two, two sets of curtains for one. These are pretty wide. I only have about this much room between, between here and there. That's all I have, so I don't need wide curtains in here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut that. That one curtain will cover both of these. Cut that. And then the, the last curtain, what we're going to do is we're going to slice that in half and we're going to actually fold that over and stitch it from the top so that way we can loop it right across. I can go down to uh, Joanne Fabrics and get some of that gold tassel to make it hang down and make it look nice. Oh, what the freak? Did he say so? Did he just say so? What does he not do? What does he not do? A lot of things I do. I know it's so, I'll tell you that much. 
That's why they get frustrated. They get frustrated because they think, how does he know all this stuff? I told you at the end of the day, all my knowledge comes from God. I never built a dedicated theater room a day in my life. Never built one, never designed one, never, I never had one. All my knowledge comes from God. I told you, we have the ability to build anything we want. Anything we want. If he, if he gives us the ability, we can build anything we want. But y'all, the thing about it, the naysayers, y'all so trapped inside the box, man. Y'all can't even, you couldn't even appreciate a floor display. You didn't even know what that room was about. What made it about? Movie theater setups? That's a visual uh, projector mapping setup. That's what it's designed for. You couldn't even see it. Who projects off the floor? Are you kidding me? You gotta open your mind. Come on, you're so closed in all the time. Open your mind and be free, free yourself. That's how we call. What that song called? Oh man. Who was the group that made that song called Free Yourself? I forgot that group. That was Free Yourself. Who wrote that song Free Yourself? Yeah. Think outside the box. Now y'all would never think about painting your projectors. Y'all, that's what I'm saying. You gotta think outside the box. Do things differently that nobody else is doing on the face of the planet. Do something different. Now, when I did this one, they came in and said, oh, you can't get to the... Yes, we can get to every single compartment. I used to customize and modify gaming PCs back in the day, and I used to do this kind of stuff, where I used to modify PCs to make them look like all kinds of interesting things. And in order, when you have that kind of skill level, you have to be able to make access to certain compartments on the computer. You can't just seal everything in. So I have access to everything on this machine if I want to get access to it. It even detaches from its base if I wanted to, so I can set it on the floor. The base is upstairs in the attic. Even has the nuclear. Nuclear. Hey, what's up, Mr. Man? What you been doing today? Oh, this is a frog tape. We're going to be doing a demonstration on Saturday. I wonder if I can teach you how to walk on a leash. See how the people do it. I wonder if you learn. You'll probably kill me in the process. So outside today, we're going to do something different. Much, much different. No inflatable screens, no 250 inch screens, no 150 inch screens. We're going to do something really different, especially involving a 180 inch screen. But I know Instagram is going to get a kick out of this bad boy. All right. That being said, I'm going to wait till everything dries up here and I'm done for the day. Well, I'm not done for the day. I still got more work to do. Um, I got orders to process. I got to finish up this strip right here, get this dried. And then after that, uh, hang the curtains. Because I want to be able to measure out the curtains to see exactly where I got to cut and where I got to sew. Hmm, it's going to come out quite nicely. Really happy about this. All right, that being said, got to go and God bless.